It is well known that endocrine therapy is an essential component on the management of hormone-sensitive breast cancer, which accounts approximately of 70% of all breast cancer cases. An aspect that warrants consideration when exploring the current use of endocrine therapy is the physician's prescribing practices. And to date, there is limited data in the literature regarding physicians' adherence to guideline-endorsed endocrine therapy prescription, the barriers en encountered for prescribing the standard of care, and the regimens that are ultimately administered. So the main objective of this study was to address this gap in knowledge regarding physicians' endocrine therapy prescribing practices. Our study aimed to compare the endocrine therapy prescribed to Mexican premenopausal breast cancer patients with the gold standard according to current national and international guidelines and to identify factors that hinder the use of the optimal treatment in a real world clinical setting. So our work consisted of a multicentric cross-sectional mm -hmm. study of premenopausal patients with primary hormone sensitive breast cancer stage one to three who had been receiving adjuvant endocrine therapy for at least one year prior to inclusion. The study took place in three public and private breast cancer referral centers located in Monterrey and in Mexico City. So clinical pathologic characteristics and prescribed endocrine therapy were collected from medical records. Two breast cancer oncologists then independently determined the endocrine therapy for, of choice for each patient according to national and international guidelines, specifically ASCO, SOSMO, and NCCN guidelines. These two oncologists considered ovarian function suppression for patients who were, who were less than 35 years, who had no involvement, or who had at least two or more high-risk characteristics, such as tumor size more than two centimeters, high histological grade, or high KI-67. The key finding was that the gold standard of endocrine therapy was prescribed only in 62% of cases, while the remaining 38% should have gone under, should have undergone ovarian function suppression, but instead received only tamoxifen. Physicians' reasons for not recommending ovarian function suppression when it was part of the therapy of choice were, one, considering it was not necessary, and two, because GNR, GNRH analogs were not, were not affordable for patients. Remarkably, a larger proportion of patients for whom the whole standard included ovarian function suppression received analogs, GN, GNRH analogs when these agents were covered by their health insurance than when they were not. Additionally, guideline endorsed regimens were prescribed more often by medical than by surgical oncologists. These findings suggest that the gold standard of treatment is prescribed to a suboptimal proportion of patients due to limited prescription of ovarian function suppression. Therefore, interventions aimed at refining physicians' knowledge on the importance of ovarian function suppression in high-risk premenopausal breast cancer patients and initiatives directed at increasing access and coverage of GnRH analogs could prove pivotal to enhance optimal endocrine therapy implementation and adherence to clinical guidelines, which could translate into improved disease outcomes in this group.